everyone, welcome to episode 33 of Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. I am Jason Azevedo, your host for this evening. And this is a show for beginner to intermediate painters. And we paint through the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line by WizKids with Vallejo Paint. We're very excited uh, today because we're getting back to the Curse of Strahd stuff we've been painting lately for our, uh, lately, not lady, lately for our Into the Mist campaign. Uh, but just before we get started, we're going to go through a couple of announcements. I was waiting actually till we went live on the D&D Twitch. Um, and I am t saying that it is live. Um... And uh, but I am seeing a rerun of Rivals of Waterdeep, which is very strange. So um, we will, I will take your word for it. I cannot see the the chat because I, again, I am seeing the Rivals of Waterdeep chat. Uh, but DC Lasser says that we are live over there too. So I'm going to take his word for it, and we're going to move forward. Um, bunch of things uh, we just want to say quick, and we'll get through it as quick as possible. And thank our partners, of course, Dungeons and Dragons, for hosting us natively on their channel. Um, to Adid, uh, to uh, WizKids for all the awesome miniatures that we paint on a weekly basis, and of course Vallejo for sponsoring the show and for providing us all the awesome, incredible paint that we use to paint these on a, a weekly uh, basis. We're also using Sirenscape uh, because it's fun to kind of set the scene in the background. Last week it was a little loud, so if it is still loud, please let me know and we will turn it down. Um, and you can just let me know in the chat. Uh, if you want to check out our adventure boxes, you can head to realmsmith.tv. And if you use the promo code I Want Adventure, you get $20 off your first box. Uh, so you can check that out there. We are going to be at GaryCon. Very excited about it. Um, and it's going to be an incredible time. And I announced last Monday that we will be painting the Young Red Dragon live at GaryCon. So for those of you that are going to GaryCon, you will get one of these. I will walk you through a master class of how to paint it with a uh, someone from WizKids will be painting with us as well as a celebrity from the D&D world. Uh, we're still nailing that down <clears throat> and getting definite uh, times and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, we will be painting it at 9 a.m. Central Time. Uh, that is when it starts and then we will go till new, uh, 11 and that is two hours painting the young red dragon Don't miss it. It's gonna be a freaking blast I know you guys have been waiting a long time for this miniature So that's gonna be a lot of fun uh, And we want to thank Vallejo and WizKids of course for being there as well as Luke and all the wonderful people at GaryCon for that as well um, Into the Mist campaign Monday nights. It's happening tomorrow night Tune in for the conclusion of Death House, which is the first part of the campaign for us. Uh, it's an official Curse of Strahd campaign on the D&D Twitch as well as on the Realmsmith Twitch. So definitely tune in for that. Uh, we'd love to see you all on the chat. We're raising awesome, incredible money for uh, Extra Life through a really cool interactive thing. We're painting some things for that campaign tonight, um, which is really exciting and a lot of fun. Uh, let me know if the music is too loud, folks, uh, in there. We are uh, I'm on the on the Realmsmith Twitch chat right now, so all should be good. Um, yeah, it's so weird that I'm not seeing that I'm seeing Rivals of Waterdeep on on replay. Oh, there we are! All of a sudden, I'm live. I see myself live on the D and D Twitch. So freaking strange. All right, I'm back. I'm here. I'm back. We're good, and we can <laughs> move on. That was so weird. All right. Um, if you guys have a question tonight, make sure that you write question before your question so I can, as I'm scanning and painting, I can see it really quickly. Capital letters, question, write the question. Uh, DC Lasser is in both chats, which is amazing. And he can also help to moderate as he does so incredibly on a weekly basis. Uh, and we want to thank him and all the moderators over at D&D for doing that. Hey, Ink and Ignorance. Hey, Walt. Um, hey, Gooey Garthon. Um... And all of you guys who are joining us tonight, thank you so much. Hey, everyone. If you like what you see tonight and you enjoy this sort of thing, if it's for you, hello, MJ Cook. Um, check out our VOD on uh, the YouTube.com slash Realmsmith and YouTube.com slash D&D. We have all of our episodes, all 32, up on our YouTube page. Check it out. Subscribe. Like. Um, and spread the word because we absolutely love doing this and bringing you guys all the wonderful Nolzer's painting goodness on a weekly basis with these incredible miniatures. Uh, also, follow the d, &D uh, Twitch page as well as the Realmsmith Twitch page. If you follow us on the Realmsmith Twitch... Twi <laughs> 
if you follow us on the Realmsmith Twitch page, you will light this little potion bottle here. Uh, and it'll go off and it'll let you know, hey, I just followed and it's a fun little interactive way. And if you subscribe, it'll go twice. Uh, blue, I think. So, uh, And we're able to accept subscribers now, which is really, really awesome. And we're thankful so much, guys, for your ongoing support uh, in all facets and in all ways. Are you guys ready? Let's dive right in. Strap in. Here we go. So... First off, of course, we need Esmeralda's Wagon. We are painting two wagons tonight. I know it's crazy. I can never just paint one thing. Uh, we have a set of brushes from Vallejo, a zero, a one, and a two. We have a Vallejo dry brush as well as some larger brushes for base coating on these bigger minis. Some water to wash and dilute our paints. Paper towel for dry brushing and cleaning our brushes, as well as a palette for mixing our paints and all of that fun, wonderful stuff as well. When it comes to paints, we are using 14 paints here. We have Heavy Sienna, Parasite Brown, and Filthy Brown for the wood areas, as well as some black wash and some sepia wash as well in there. We've got Gunmetal and Chainmail Silver mixed with, uh, or in conjunction with the black wash for the metal areas. Glorious Gold for gold with the sepia wash. Orange Fire Pale Yellow for the windows, as if there was a glowy kind of candle burning inside of the wagon. We've got Heavy Violet Warlock Purple for one of the, of the roofs. And then we've got heavy green and scorpy green or escorpina green for some people for the other one. Uh, once again, I want to thank you guys for your feedback on a weekly basis. You guys said you wanted to see less of me and more of the painting service. So we have opened up just like this. We've opened up the painting service uh, surface for you, the window, so that you can see the miniatures much larger in detail, and hopefully that works for you guys, and you guys can see more of what's going on. Uh, as well, uh, we kind of closed in the, the sponsor kind of ad area to provide more surface area for that. All right, you guys ready to dive in here? I got a question already. Am I allowed to see this, or is it spoilerific? Oh, that's Brandon who plays a Sterling at a table. It's not spoilerific. You can watch this. Um, one thing in Curse of Strahd that there is a lot of is wagons. The Vistani have wagons. Esmeralda has wagons. Rectavio has a wagon. Uh, everybody has wagons, and there's tons of Vistani in it. So this is the pre-painted wagon from the Adventurer's Camp boxed set. It was a, a, a box incentive maybe for the first or second wave of the WizKids minis. That was painted previously. So I'm just kind of using that as a bit of a reference space, but we're going to do totally something different for our own uh, on these two. So these are the two um, other wagons. These are from the Unpainted Adventures set. Um, and for those of you that didn't get a close look at it, here is the, the uh, oh, just smacking the camera, Jay, whatever. Uh, this is the young red dragon that we'll be painting at Gary Con. Don't miss it. Tickets will go fast. I think it's uh, tickets are opening up to uh, silver and um, bronze or sil silver uh, badge members and and the public. So definitely be in there. Okay. So again, questions. Right. Big uh, caps lock question for us so that we know. Man, there's so many people watching. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We are live on Facebook. We are live on uh, Twitch, on the Realmsmith Twitch, and we're also live on the D&D &D Twitch as usual. Um, and uh, lots of people on, uh, people on Facebook as well, including Melanie, who plays Callie. Um, I will check Facebook every once in a while for comments, but the comments don't, don't stream the same way on Facebook. It's a little uh, iffy sometimes, so we don't use it as our primary source of comment viewing okay so we are going to use heavy sienna heavy sienna is an extra opaque from paint from the uh vallejo extra opaque game color line uh it is used as a base color and basically basically see what i did there um you can base coat something in one coat which is why we love that color there is a lot of wood on these uh, the way that i'm going to do it so we're just going to dilute just a touch just to help it to flow. And we're going to take this and we are going to paint it basically all over the bottom half of this miniature. Um, I'm using this really large brush. Uh, it's actually a dry brush, but it's got really wide bristles on it. So I can go through and I'm basically just going to get this paint into every nook and cranny along the side, along the bottom, along the back on top here uh, where the windows are um, 
if I get a little bit on the roof like I have already, no big deal. We're going to end up painting over that anyway, so it's not a serious issue. You don't have to be really careful. And that's kind of one of the tips, I would say, or the secrets for speed painting is to know when to be cautious and careful and when not to. We should be able to paint these in two hours. I failed with the Barbarians. I failed with the Hill Giant. I need a win this week, folks. <laughs> um, sometimes I just, yeah, bite off more than we can chew on this in this two-hour episode. But I will not be beaten tonight. I swear it. These um, wheels are a lot of fun. All these spokes, that becomes a little challenging to get in there, but we will do our best. Okay, gonna need a lot more heavy sienna. Been lurking here for some time, wondering what lamp and light you used to paint. Oh, that's good. I don't remember the brand. I'll have to look at it and then maybe answer that question next time around. Um, but the light we are using, it's a light panel above me that's pointing down in this area. We've changed it. We used to have like a, like just like a, LED kind of desk lamp, but we upgraded to a light panel that, that diffuses the light a bit better and spreads it more and is video kind of safe so you don't get your scan lines. I don't know all the technical terms, um, but uh, but yeah, it's like a light panel LED. It's about, I think, 100 bucks Canadian, so. Um, but we can share a link potentially in the description or in the comments later on. Um, and if we don't answer it, just ask us again on one of the socials or on the YouTube video, and we can share that link if I happen to not retain that question <laughs> moving forward. I am finding that in this, I am um, there, in the cracks in between kind of the boards here, I'm missing some of it, so you just gotta be careful with that. Switch it to the other side here. Is there anyone that is painting wagons along with us? Anybody who is, I'd love to hear if there's anybody who's actually painting along. Um, I'd love to hear you guys. Lots of touchdowns going on. People are happy, I guess, with what we're painting. Um, it's great. Oh, thank you for the sub. There it is. Terry says, you got this. Thank you. I feel confident today. But that about the next like hour and 40 minutes. Again, let me know if that music is too loud. We may switch over to like a wagon ride a little later just to. This is the sound set I created in Sirenscape for um, the beginning of our Curse of Strata to the Mist campaign. Through the online creator, which you would you get access to as a super siren. You guys can check them out at sirenscape.com. You can download the player for free. And there's lots of kind of free sound sets that you can use, and then you can buy ad hoc, like each sound set a la carte, as it were. Or you can subscribe as a super siren and get access to everything. Those guys are such great dudes too. There's lots of um, lots of licensed and official D&D &D content on Sirenscape as well for a lot of the most recent kind of releases. I saw a Salt Marsh sound set go up recently. I think they have some Avernus stuff there already, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And they have monster packs like Splacers and Beholders and all this kind of fun stuff, so that out okay this is going to take a little while this base coating process on all the wood here and i'm just making a huge mess of the table we built but whatever what are you going to do this is definitely going to be the longest process is just all of this all this base coating especially in between all of these wheels make sure you get all the spokes in the rim. Even though some of this hardware under here, I'm going to 
paint metal. Um, and I don't know. I've never constructed a wagon before. I'm not a wagon constructor. Um, so I'm probably going to get some of this hardware wrong, folks. But feel free to let me know. Um, but I am the boss of my wagon. And I'm going to paint this wagon how I feel I should. And of course, you guys are the boss of your wagons. I should absolutely paint your wagons the way that you feel you should. You were the boss of you. Okay, it's getting there. Slowly but surely, it's getting there. Thanks, Ink and Ignorance, for hosting us. Appreciate that, buddy. Our players have had a heck of a time in our Curse of Strahd campaign so far. If you guys have been watching live on Monday nights or even in VOD after the fact, it's been pretty crazy. I think Brandon, who plays Sterling at the end of one of the sessions, said, man, this is a clinic. And that was when uh, Falfer, our halfling ranger, almost died. No spoilers. I should, I should watch spoilers for people who haven't watched it yet or are just catching up. I apologize. Forgot with the spoiler warnings. But uh, you guys should definitely, if you haven't yet, go check it out. You can catch up before tomorrow. We also have recaps every week that Adam, who plays Dimitri, puts together quite magnificently. And we play those at the at the top of the at the top of the stream. And we usually post them on socials ahead of time, just so for people who haven't been watching and kinda wanna jump in. Oops, smoking my head against the camera here. Those people who haven't been tuning in and want to still catch it can. It's getting there. I'm getting there. I want to make sure we don't add too much paint to this. There's a lot of detail here, especially in between those boards uh, on the side. And if you add too much paint and just really jam it in there, you're definitely going to uh, clog up that detail. You don't want to do that. So just enough paint to cover, but not enough to clog is probably advisable. And I imagine all these axles are actually metal. I'm painting them all brown just to make sure I catch everything. But I'm probably going to add some gunmetal to that after. Thank you again for the sub or for the follow. Question. You were going to Gen Con, correct? Um, well, that is a great question, Ink and Ignorance. Um, I, the plan right now is that Vallejo and us are just working that out. So we're trying to sort out what we're actually going to be doing at Gen Con this year. There is a very good chance that I will be there. Um, so just trying to figure it out. Just waiting working out the details but we will we will give some updates on gen con as soon as we have them um we're very excited about gary con i will be at gamma trade show for all of you industry folks who own stores um if you're there i'll be representing vallejo there so you guys can and showing off the new whiz kids paint line if you guys are around please stop by the Vallejo booth and say hi to myself and to the wonderful Alex Vallejo himself. Another follow. Thanks, guys. All the love. Feeling it. I'm feeling it. I am not feeling love for these for these wheels. This was perhaps too was a bit. Okay, I'm not speaking too soon. I have faith faith in my wagon painting abilities it's just that 
Wheels take a while for coverage here. Okay, so I've got three pretty much. I'm sure I'm going to do this and then come back and go, oh, man, I missed that point. I missed that part. But anybody who watches this show on a regular basis knows that, that happens fairly often. These wagons are really cool, though. I cannot get into where I need to get to. Ah, oh, there. <laughs> Yeah, so is there anybody out there that is... <laughs> inked, inked and ignorance. Ink and ignorance just said, whoa, wait, hold up. WizKids will have a Vallejo paint line? Yes. Some of you have heard it here first. It's been talked about at trade shows and shown at Nuremberg Toy Fair already. But WizKids and Vallejo are teaming up to create a WizKids paint line that is curated specifically for the no for for the Wiz Kids line of miniatures. Same colors, same color codes, same color names, but they will be in half bottles. So I think eight ounce bottles, and um, all of the box art and uh, tutorials in the boxes and the technique sets and so on are done by yours truly, Romp Smith team and myself. And uh, I curated all the whole paint line for those guys. We all partnered together to bring that to you. So, um, again, another honor to be working with the incredible people at WizKids and Vallejo. And you guys will get more information about that as it's released. I'm not even sure when the line will be live or available, even for order from your stores. But keep an eye out from it. Tell your store owners that you want it when it comes out because it's very exciting and fun. Um, so yeah. <laughs> it's great for, for newer for people who already um, collect Vallejo paint or have a collection of Vallejo paint going. Uh, it's not gonna help you as much necessarily because you already have a lot of the paints that will be in the line. It's great for new people coming to the, to the hobby who wanna try it um, and are excited to kinda give it a go. Um, and you can get little technique sets for eat for different aspects of the line um, and then also yeah and then also two 40 paint kits that are broken up it's kind of like a basic and an intermediate level selection so great way to try out the Vallejo line and get the most out of your Nolzers and WizKids minis. Okay, so that is, the, I think, I'm gonna, I'm, like I said, I'm probably gonna come back in here and be like, oh, I missed that, I missed that, I missed that. But I think that is a base coated bottom half of a wagon. Um, oh, I didn't do in here, so I gotta just come back in. Again, I'm being very messy. Doesn't matter as long as you're not putting too much paint onto the miniature and clogging detail. It really doesn't matter how the neighboring areas look. As long as you have a nice solid base coat, which is very attainable with this heavy sienna. Um, this will be all wood up here. I actually saw some, some uh, reference, some inspiration online by someone who painted one of these. If you look up the wagon online you'll see this really awesome paint scheme that somebody did and there's like leaves and such on the on the base they did like a like a diorama base okay put that one down number two of course we're batch painting folks and for those of you that are new to painting batch painting is basically painting similar colors across multiple miniatures so that you save time uh, cleaning your brush changing between colors all of that kind of stuff, and it speeds up your paint process. We're gonna be doing a lot of dry brushing on these minis and using a lot of kind of quick techniques with washes and dry brushing to get a pretty decent final result here. If I start getting slow on time painting both, I will switch to only painting one, but I think we're, I think we're doing all right. This is the part of the process that definitely takes the longest. Question. Ten, tangentiality? 
tangentially related. You said 100 Canadian. Are you in Canada? Yes, I am. I moved from San Diego to a city about an hour from Toronto. First of all, I love Canada. I love Toronto. I think it's a great place to live. But why would you move from San Diego? I love San Diego so much. I'm sure there's a wonderfully good, important reason. But just to let you know that, and I'm sure you already know, winters suck here. So if you can stay in San Diego during the winter, that's good. But moving right along. Uh, about an hour from Toronto, Ontario, and have found it harder to find it and support public gaming. Yeah, I hear you. Um, Dougie Fresh, um, what city are you from, may I ask? And uh, with along with that, uh, I can maybe point you to some gaming options based on the city you live in, if I know of anything that is kind of around that area. Uh, an hour ain't too far in Ontario. So let me know because Ontario is huge. So please, you know what? I did forget to kind of do the whole, I don't know how much I'm going to do of metal on the top here. So I'm just going to fill that in there. Kitchener Waterloo. Oh gosh, Dougie Fresh. Um, Kitchener Waterloo is a great area. Um, so in Guelph, there is an incredible gaming cafe uh, owned and run by my good friend, um, Tommy Gofton, and it is called The Round Table, and it's a gaming cafe where you can go play D&D, tons of board games. It's called The Round Table in Guelph, and that won't be too far from you. Um, a little bit of a drive, but not too far. Uh, as well, um, in Kitchener-Waterloo, there is J&J's, um, and it's like a game and toys store. Tons of good stuff in there. Um, you can check them out. Uh, and then, of course, online, there's always great options for But the round table is a great place to go play D&D and board games. So you can check that out. Yeah, 20 minutes exactly, Dougie. I've been there many times. Uh, in fact, our uh, fulfillment partner for our adventure box is in, is in Guelph. Um, so I'm up that way quite a, quite a bit, actually. Um, so if you're ever heading out that way and I happen to be in the area... If you post on our Facebook and find out, we can maybe even game together. Who knows? But uh, welcome to Canada. I'm kidding about the winter. Not really. It sucks. I don't like it, but um, I think it's in my hole. Thank you. Uh, in the Mediterranean blood in my veins. But it is a wonderful country. I am, I bleed red and white, folks. I love me some Canadia. See another question there. I'm just going to finish painting the front of this, and then we'll go from there. Here we go. Uh, question. I am planning on building a gaming table soon. I know you have said you built yours. Do you happen to have a tutorial? MJ Cook, that is a great question. Um, we do have footage of me building this table. Um, it exists. It is not edited together in a form for which we can post but I am getting tons of requests to finally air that. So I think I'm, I will push to do that. I'll talk to Adam, again, who plays Dimitri in our stream. He's our, our video editor, very talented video editor. And if he's watching, maybe that's something that we can, we can kind of push through. We haven't done like a – we call those gaming aid tutorials. Um, we haven't done a tutorial like that in a very long time. You guys – a lot of you have seen probably our DM screen tutorial – uh, on YouTube, uh, it's got it's probably our most viewed tutorial ever, and uh, it teaches you kind of how to build a the, the the DM screen that I use for our live streams actually on Monday nights, the red one, and it's on the shelf behind me here. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but anyways, uh, I digress. We will absolutely try our best to get that tutorial up and running and out in the short term future because people have been asking for it and it's really helpful and it was fun to build easy and fairly inexpensive actually to build this table so believe it or not so we just need to we just need to make it happen so i will absolutely post that soon Um, yes, so we're right over half an hour in, hour and a half left. I am confident if 
folks. I am I am confident in my abilities. Thanks, Gator Jewels, for subscribing. Appreciate that. Guys, if you like what we do, um, it costs to do this. So we so appreciate subscribers who subscribe. As well, if you happen to have Twitch Prime, um, and that is Amazon Prime gives you one free Twitch subscription. Uh, if you guys want to use that for our channel, it doesn't cost you anything. And it's just very helpful for us to be able to continue doing all this awesome stuff. So consider making us your your Twitch Prime subscription. Um, I think you can change it every month, I believe. I'm not totally sure how it works, but anyways, consider that. And we thankful, guys, for you guys just even tuning in. It's awesome. I am a little afraid to go back to that other wagon because I know for a fact that, <laughs> that there's going to be a ton of areas that I missed. Or maybe not. I gotta resubscribe every month manually. I didn't know that. But thanks, Gator Jewel, and appreciate it very much. I keep seeing little um, flashes of light to the left of me here, and it's the it's the torch that we have. The faux torch uh, that we have burning behind me here. And I keep thinking it's a follow, but it's not. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Just killing this large brush, but this is exactly what it's for. Just for jamming paint into all the nooks and crannies on this wagon. So you have to go back and you can't just set it and then it renews every month. You actually have to go back every month and... Huh. Didn't know that. Another question actually I have for you folks, which I was going to ask you to vote on today. So please comment in the chat and I'll kind of keep an eye out for it and see what, what you all say. But... Um, do you guys, you know what, I'm not going to say that, I thought I was, I'm not, because I was going to suggest, we have a, we have our, our ske schedule set for February already, horses are next week, which go with these wagons, which we really need for our stream, I was going to ask if you guys want us to paint some of the new Wave 12 minis um, that are part of this Red Dragon, but I think I'm going to wait till March to do those, I apologize folks for teasing you ahead of time. But the gold dragon, the silver dragon, I think I'm going to hold off until March. The reason being is because they come out in March. So if uh, it'll be closer to the time that you guys get them in your hands. So I think we're going to wait. So horses, I think, is what's going to happen. Sorry. That's totally like offering you guys a cookie and then pulling it back. But horses are important, folks. D&D, there's lots of horses in D&D. Lots of horses in minis. I think they, they deserve their own episode. What do you guys think? Please, sound off in the comments. Let me know. Just scanning for more questions here. Taking a look into Facebook. Hey, everyone. Sorry, I just woke up, Kelly says. Uh, I don't see any questions in Facebook. Sometimes they don't show up, folks, so I'm apologizing right now if I miss questions in Facebook. If you want to ask me a question in real time, the best way to do it is on Twitch um, because Facebook has a really weird time, uh, a really hard time with um, refreshing the comments. This axle has come un unstuck here a little bit, so I'm just going to have to add some crazy glue to that later to make sure that that doesn't bust off these miniatures tend to be really well made um, but every once in a while they come undone because they are multi multi-part minis so sometimes you have to do a few
few little touch-ups and fixes. Man, all right. These wheels are something else. Something else to tell you. Almost done. Question, if I cheer you here on the D&D &D channel while you are on, does it support you or do I need a separate sub to Realmsmith? I believe, Dougie, uh, that you need to have a separate sub on Realmsmith for us to receive that support, but um, we are 100% in support of supporting D&D &D as well. Um, so, you know, you can jump over and support us and sub and then jump back to D&D &D or, or, or vice versa. Um, we're just here to, what do they say about rising tide? Raises all ships. It's not sinks all ships. That would be bad. But anyways. <laughs> Thanks guys for your support. I really appreciate it all. Okay. We just really want to keep doing what we're doing and we love doing it. So. All right. Also, for those of you um, that are new to Realm Smith, we are doing the the season finale. So we do a twelve episode season for our live streams. Thank you for the follow, guys. Saw that out of the corner of my eye. Um, oh, and another one. Thank you. Um, we do. We're doing the season finale. So it's twelve episode seasons that we do. And a lot of people are like, "Oh no, that's not enough time to get Curse of Strahd done." Well, the season will end, and then we will do another season in the future. Uh, in the hopefully the near future. Thank you again for another sub. Wow, guys. Um, and uh, and so don't fret. For those of you that love Christoph Strahd and love what we're doing at Into the Mist, if we decide to do something else for Season 2, we will be back to Christoph Strahd um, after that, after whatever we do then. We haven't quite decided yet. I haven't finalized, but there are some talks. So anyways, a season is 12 episodes, and we will... Um, be um, doing that just because we also feel it's a bit more bite-sized um, just like a like a TV season if we're doing 60 episodes kind of in a row oh look at that that just kind of came off I need to glue that on as well um, if we do like 60 episodes it's hard for new viewers to kind of jump in uh, kind of in the middle and so we like to allow we like to allow um, those folks to kind of catch up and then launch season two. Um, and for those of, that might not be fans of Chris of Stroud, you know, it gives it an opportunity also for us to do something a little different and then come back to it um, and so on. So anyways, uh, we are doing the, all of that to say that we are doing the finale of season one at Gary Con, um, quite kind of fittingly, uh, the... It'll be episode 13, which fits very nicely with the Strahd campaign. Um, and uh, we have some celebrity, surprise celebrity guests joining us for that stream. Actually, one for sure that we know of is Nora Ibrahim, um, who has painted with us at this table before and I've played with on a number of streams out in the wild. Um, she's awesome. She's from the upcoming show, Have Dice, Will Travel. Um, and she is in L.A. by night on Geek and Sundry and a bunch of other stuff. So she will be joining us for for Gary Khan on the Into the Mist cast. And, um, and then there are others that are surprises as it stands right now. We may or may not announce them. I don't know. But, hey, wait a second. I did pretty good, folks. I don't see a lot of... That's all right. Good. I can start washing that guy. I'm going to let this guy sit. See how I did. Okay, so that is two heavy siennas done. I am going to rinse my brush, which just did a lot of work for me. Wipe it off. And then we're going to put a wash on this stuff. Um... Thanks for the bits, Dougie Fresh. Appreciate that. Tier 1 subscriber. That's awesome. Um, Gator Joe says, for regular subscription, you can set up... Oh, okay, no, I already read that. Uh, any others? 
Hello, puppy lover. Oh, Snap Dad says he really appreciates shorter streams with streams with shorter story arcs. Same characters are good, but 60 episode arcs are hard on a dad. I hear you, dude. And that's kind of what I've felt in the past. So it just allows people to catch up and and kind of you know join us um, in more bite-sized kind of um, yeah bite-sized bits. Bite-sized bits. Redundant a little bit. Anyways, okay. So I'm going to use a black wash, folks, on this. Um, that is the plan. We're going to use quite a bit of black wash, I'm sure. Give it a little shake. Onto the palette it goes. We are going to dilute it just a touch, again, to help it flow a little bit better. And we're going to use black wash across all of the wood areas on the miniature that has already dried. Um, you know what? Um, yes, I'm going to do that. So I'll have to come back and use black wash again on the metal, but we want to dry brush this before we use the black wash. So let's just, you can see I'm using quite a bit here, but I'm just placing it on the miniature. For those of you that are new to painting, uh, washing is when you add a, washing basically what it allows you to do is it gives you, oh, for some reason it's pulling paint off here a little bit. Um, we'll just have to come back and touch that up a little bit later. Basically what it does is it adds contrast and shadow to your miniature. Uh, it goes, seeps into the recesses and gives you a really cool, you know what, I'm gonna use a different brush for this. Um, it gives you kind of almost automatic sh shadows on your mini. So that's kind of the desire that we want here. And it's just going to really delineate and add some interest to all these kind of heavy sienna areas. We're going to get a lot of wash. So I'm just going to pour it on here. Tengu Bruxo says, because of this show, I painted my first mini and it came out pretty good. Thank you so much for sharing your craft. Aw, oh, man. See, that's what I'm talking about. You're so welcome, Tengu or Bruxo. I don't know what you want to go by. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means so much. It means a lot to us to hear that sort of thing. And when we do, when we do this at shows, we have master classes with Vallejo at the, at the major shows and conventions. You know, it's so awesome to hear people say it's their first time painting a miniature and then watching them basically get up from our class and go over to the WizKids booth and <laughs> buy a bunch of, you know, minis because of their now kind of hooked and then i feel guilty that i just hooked them into a hobby that <laughs> takes time and money but <laughs> but it's just so great to to know that we can be a part of you know bringing more people to the to, to the hobby and to the craft so thank you all right um again i'm just going ahead now you know as a as a Kind of a gypsy wagon as a Vistani wagon a lot of these areas could be really brightly colored and painted uh, with vibrant colors some of the details in there we're not going to go into a lot of detail um, we're trying to do kind of a quick a quick run through of this so that you guys can know if you want to get these wagons on the table the quickest easiest kind of most time efficient way um, to get really great results a short amount of time so that's basically it oh no i haven't done that whole side yet <laughs> surprise surprise i missed the side um for these of you the tune in no i do that often so we'll grab this here and again this is the black wash from the vallejo game color line i use this and the sepia wash the most those are the two washes that flesh wash is a close third I do have some paint coming off the wheels here. I probably didn't let this dry quite enough. That is too bad. So I'm going to have to come back and touch up some of those areas. I'm trying now to brush and not scrape a little bit. There, OK. 
Okay. We'll come back and maybe sop up some of this wash afterwards if it's not drying fast enough. Washes do take some time to dry, folks, so just be patient with them. It's a good time to kind of like add your wash and then go and have a snack or, or whatever you got to do. Put that down. I'm going to let this one dry a little bit more because I don't want the same thing to happen on this one. And now we can talk a little bit. Which is it? How much time we got, folks? Just over an hour? Uh, I think we may be okay. We'll see. Any questions? If, if I missed any questions from you folks and you asked them, feel free to ask them now if I haven't answered them already. Um, just used Vallejo paints yesterday for the first time. I like them quite a bit better. That's awesome. Yeah, they have incredible paints. Great thing about Vallejo is dropper bottles. So you're using less paint um, than some of the competition. Uh, the paint stays wet longer in the palette, I find, with Vallejo, which is great. Um, it's a great family story. Uh, the father of Alex and his mom started this company in, like, the 60s. Started in New Jersey, actually. From Sp they, fl they, flew fr they moved from Spain to New Jersey, started the company, then moved back to Spain. Um, but it's still formulated by the family in a factory in Spain. Um, and Alex, who was a kid when it started, is the CEO still, or the president um, still, and still runs the company, which is really, really great. So, and he's just a really good guy. That's my story. And it's just a really cool family business story. Um, they started in kind of like fine art paint. A lot, anybody who does fine arts out there is aware of kind of the Vallejo line of paints for fine arts um, and acrylic painting. And, uh, and then they started into the hobby world and have been kicking butt. So, all right, here we go. We're going to see if the same thing happens here. I am kind of trying to speed through and we used a lot of paint here, which is why probably it's not drying as fast coming off on this side too. That is not good. The one thing is, is if you find like you're having issues with washes and such, um, or if you, you know, make a mistake while you're painting, it's quite easy to come back afterwards and before you touch it up with the base coat, sometimes if it's a small enough area, especially if it's on the, on the edge, thank you for the follow, Sometimes if it's on the edge um, of the of the detail, uh, your dry brush will cover and fix that. So don't panic. Um, it, there's a good chance that when you're dry brushing later that you will be able to um, fix it up in a, in a later kind of process. So I guess the key is don't panic. Try not to spend too much time on the areas that I know will be metal in color after. Like a lot of the axles and stuff. Um, I am noticing that we are still rubbing paint off on that side, and that's too bad. But again, I'm not too worried about it. Because we can always come back in and fix that later. More black wash. Question. So I know these are nosers, but any chance you'll do some streaming videos on the barkeep, strumpet, and such from your box? Uh, great question. Puppy Lover is uh, a um, subscriber of our adventure boxes. So good news, Puppy Lover. Uh, we have a... Um, we have... a tutorial on our YouTube of... I painted the, the bar set. I, I think it was pre-Vallejo sponsorship, so it may be another line of paints, but you can um, use that as reference and then color match. Uh, so you can do that, as well as the, I don't know if I did the strumpet, but I definitely did the serving girl and a bunch of other stuff from that from that set. Uh, and she's referring to the Shattered Shield box, which is the first box in our Adventure Box um, series that we ship monthly. Um, 
and puppy lover your boxes are coming out going out tomorrow i think hopefully you saw that uh that message but they are going out tomorrow we know that we can confirm that so all right What's this song playing? It's great. Um, so this is from, this is, it's all Sirenscape. So those of you that are just tuning in, um, we play Sirenscape throughout the session just to kind of add some mood. I like it because it puts me in the right mindset for painting. Uh, oh man, I am just lifting paint everywhere on this folks because we were trying to speed this along. So, uh, I think it's from the Witchwood sound set. Um, but if you head to sirenscape.com and download the free Witchwood set that they offer, um, you can check it out. And I believe a lot of this is from Witchwood. Pretty sure. I used that, I used that as a base for the sound set that we use for our stream. Okay, so that is that. I'm going to let that sit and dry for a bit so they don't do any more damage to it um, by painting over too quickly. Uh, actually, I may go ahead and start to base coat the roofs as we go because we don't have a lot of time. We have an hour left, so as we kind of wait for these to dry, I'd have to hold it by the wheels, but that's not a huge deal. I may go ahead and start to base coat the wheels. Or the roofs. Okay, let's do that. First roof is going to be purple. So we're going to use heavy heavy purple, which is, again, another extra opaque paint. And that is going to go in, on in one coat, more or less. Um, I'm going to use the large brush to start, and then I'm probably going to have to move to the smaller brush. But I will do this one. And as the wash is drying on the body, I'm going to go ahead and... And this brush may be a little large for this. I don't want to paint over all the goodness that we just did. Yeah, you know what? Too big. Too big. Uh, although I may not have one that is much smaller. We'll try this one. The only big ones that I have are these kind of dry brush sized, sized brushes. That's working out. And so that is going to be heavy purple across the entirety of the roof. And then we're going to add kind of metal accents along the edges. That's why I'm not painting the very edge kind of trim on this roof. We're going to keep that primed for a little later. And then also, obviously, you want to hit this roof area here as well. We want a solid, nice solid base coat on this. And then we're going to dry brush it with some Warlord Purple later. I will also do kind of the detail on that roof, like hit the edges and the sides a little later as well with a smaller brush. Come in and close up some of that detail. But this is a great way to just get the paint on the miniature. Use a larger brush if you can. And that happened a lot faster than if I was using sand number two on that. There we go. Purple roof. Put that down for a sec. Grab a smaller brush here. This is a number two I'm grabbing. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint the edge of the roof along with this kind of twisty detail on the end here. And there's going to be a lot of drying done. And drying time is kind of what usually kills us on these, on these tutorials. Especially washes, because washes take a while. Okay, so that is a purple roof. Oh, a couple little areas I missed here. As it dries, I'm sure I'll find more that I missed. But for right now, that looks okay. So we'll put that down.
Do you go heavier on the wash underneath? Um, Prometheus, uh, I'm just wondering what you mean by underneath. Do you mean underneath the wagon? Or um, what do you, I just wanna understand what you mean by underneath specifically. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna take that same kind of larger brush that I used there and I'm going to get the heavy green that we have. And this is what we're gonna be using for the other ones. We're gonna do a green roof and we're gonna do a purple roof on the bottom of the wagon, yeah. So uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, what I won't do is when it comes to washes, I kind of do washes because it's hard to kind of gauge amount I do a, a, a basically a similar kind of uniform wash across the entirety of the of the area that I want to use the wash on and then what I'll do is I will um, come back and I won't dry brush that area as much I'll either do a light or just mix mix or miss it entirely um, that's kind of how I manage the darkness on the on the underside of anything if it's a miniature if it's a building if it's a a wagon um, it's kind of in the highlighting stage that I manage how how light I make bring it back up to, if that makes any sense. Um, I am using heavy green for this roof. Another extra opaque color from Vallejo. And this will provide a nice base coat for the roof. Okay, we're gonna twist this a little bit that way. Lots of chat today, folks. It's awesome. Um, thank you, Glinix, for the subscription with Twitch Prime. Appreciate that. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Feeling the love. So great. All the feels. Question. Do you water down your opaque paints? I do a little bit. Um, Glinix, I, uh, I always add a little bit of water. I don't add too much to the opaques because again, we want them to go on nice and solid and strong. Um, but to the extra opaques, but I do add just a touch to help it to flow nicely and do what I need it to do. So yes, absolutely. Uh, I do, I dilute pretty much every paint I put on my brush. I always grab a little bit of water, not too much because you don't want it to be watery. Um, unless that's what you're going for, unless what you, you need or you're making a wash or something like that. But typically I'm just, it's just serving, whoop, it's just serving as a flow aid for me. Um, basically thinning the paint just a touch so it flows nicely onto the miniature. I painted a little bit of green on the top of that wagon, but that's okay. Okay. Trying to get in there. There we go. That worked. And then the top of the roof here, the middle roof part. Sounds like the uh, the sirenscape isn't too loud this week, which is good. Last week people were complaining a little bit that it was a little distracting, a little too loud. So if it is, just let me know, folks, so we can turn it down. <laughs> Clinix is saying it was the most cumbersome process to sign up for Amazon Prime. Amazon needs to streamline that. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that true? <laughs> Sorry about that. And thanks for taking your time on a Sunday evening. Appreciate the effort. It means even more now knowing that it was not easy to become a Twitch Prime subscriber. Uh, that's good. Sorry about that. I will take it up with Amazon next time I talk to them. Which is never, but if I ever do, I will say, listen, listen, guys, make that easier. Okay. Is there anyone in the chat that will be at GaryCon that we will see there? Uh, not only are we doing Nolzer's live at Gary Khan, painting the, the Young Red Dragon, which will be coming up that month. Um, but 
We're also doing the finale, like I said, of Into the Mist with some celebrity guests at the table, live from the Gary Con studio. And we'll also uh, be, we'll have a booth where we'll be um, giving live demos of our adventure boxes for people who are interested. Very excited. Um... Hey, Oso, welcome. As always. Okay, so this wash is taking a little bit of time here. I'm careful to dab it off. I'm trying to dab a little bit, but it's taking paint off. That's not good, so we're just gonna let it sit. For some reason, the paint on this is not sticking as, as it usually as it well as it does, and it might be because I'm not letting it dry long enough, and it's a large surface area. That's probably what's going on. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I'm just having to be a bit more patient on on this, and the wash is still it's still drying here. Just gonna start to fill in some of these areas, and I'm not too worried about adding a wash again to this. It's fine. It'll add kind of an unnatural, uh, or sorry, a natural kind of uh, differentiation in the color, which is fine for me. I don't mind that. The wash isn't quite dry yet, so it's kind of perfect for me to kind of go in and touch up certain areas here. Because then when we dry brush, a lot of that's going to be covered over anyways, so I'm not too worried about it. This one wasn't as bad, I think, as the other one. Just a few areas here. Okay, yep. That one's almost dry. There we go. I'm enjoying painting this, this wagon. I actually like painting terrain and kind of like the objects and the and the accessories and such. It's a lot of fun. It's a bit of a different change of pace. Yeah, a blow dryer would have been good too. I usually have my fan. I'm not sure where it is just yet. Just now. <laughs> um, but it's okay. We have we're doing okay. Um, Prometheus says you live so you live in Lake Geneva is that what you're saying I believe oh here comes Bruno the tavern dog hey Bruno how's it going come to say hi to everybody well you know what we're waiting for paint to dry and watching it's not fun so as, as the saying goes so why not Oh, you're so top heavy. Oh my goodness. This is Bruno, the tavern dog. Here, we'll go to a quick wide shot because he deserves it. This is Bruno, my Frenchie, and he's a good boy. I think I lost my mic here. Sorry. Bruno, you're just so uncareful. Here we go. That's better. He's like, what are you doing, Dad? I'm just trying to just say hi to everyone. He won't look at me in the eyes when I try and... <laughs> yeah, he's a level three war dog for sure. Okay, go. Don't be disruptive, Bruno. Sorry, folks, just to fix my mic. Hopefully it's not too loud out there. Apologize for that. There we go. All right. Let's go back. Oh, cool. Ten minutes away from Wisconsin, from Lake Geneva. Awesome. Question. 
Oso says, has Curse of Strahd been going like you thought it would? <laughs> well, we have players watching, so I can't totally be honest about all of that. Maybe at some point we'll do kind of like a debrief um, from Curse of Strahd. That'd be fun to kind of give you the inside scoop on how it went and, and all of that stuff. That said, no adventure ever goes necessarily the way that I thought it would. Um, the players are doing very well so far. We're moving through it slower than I expected, which, again, is okay. Um, because we're playing D&D, &D, we're having fun, it doesn't matter. And I want to allow the players to kind of go at their own pace. And so that's the only thing, is I'm kind of gauging when to do certain things and how quickly to get through certain things. Um, okay, I'm going to start to paint in. Now, it's still drying a little bit in some areas. I'm going to go ahead... Um, I was going to say I'm going to go ahead and start to paint the metal, but I can't really do that. That is not a good idea, folks, to paint your metal before uh, your wash is dry. So I'm in a bit of a pickle currently, and this isn't why it's important. Sometimes to think about your workflow and how you're going to, you know, uh, tackle certain areas and not others. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to focus kind of on the areas that have already dried the most and try and dry brush those, which is never a great idea. Uh, unless I, you know what, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead, uh, I'm not gonna add a wash to the roof because this is pretty dark as it is. And we don't have a lot of time. Let me think here for a second. I was gonna add a wash to the roof because it was gonna look really cool. Let me see here. Let me think this through for a second. I'm going to start trying to dry brush the wood. Um, and that will allow me to kind of move forward. So we have a Parasite Brown here. That is a game color paint color. Uh, we're going to load our brush. And again, with dry brushing, for those of you that are new to painting, basically you load your brush and then you wipe all of it off on a paper towel. Seems counterintuitive. The idea here is that we basically just want to de deposit the dry residue of that color onto the miniature, miniature's highest kind of detail. What that's doing is it's adding natural highlights where they would kind of exist. You can see the wheel there, just on that, like that. And we're going to do that across. We want to go against the grain here. Bruno, you're disgusting and you're making disgusting noises. Although it kind of sounds a little bit like a zombie, so maybe fitting. But now, of course, this dry brush isn't working as good as it should necessarily because I am doing it over a semi wet surface, which is never really the way to do it. But again, we're trying to get through this fairly quickly, but you can see what that's doing there. It's just lightening the edges of a lot of this detail. There we go. In here it's all dry, so we can hit all of that detail in here. And I'm gauging as I go how much paint I actually have on my brush based on how much I want to kind of go on here. It looks like our whole cast will be at GaryCon for our, for our live finale, which is exciting as well. So if you are at GaryCon, please stop by and say hi, either by the booth or if you see us walking around, I'd love to chat with you folks. Say hi. Yeah, that's coming along nicely. A little too much on there, didn't wipe enough off. There, I am finding that I need to put a little bit more on for it to show up. bit of the brown there on the edge, so I'm just going to touch that up. 
Let's start moving turbo speed here, folks. Okay, so we're starting to get, you can already see how cool that the side of that looks. Some more Parasite Brown. We got about 45 minutes left on here. I mean, if going. I'm going a bit more heavy on it just to cover more in a shorter amount of time. Feeling pretty confident with that. Make sure I get these front, inside, under here. There we go. Okay, so that one's pretty much the Parasite Brown is done on that one. You can see that it's lightened up a fair amount. You can see how the wash, what it's done to the side of that wagon looks really cool. I don't know why the uh, camera here is there. Okay, I'm gonna do the same on the other one. Joel is also in the chat as Realm Smith. Joel plays Falfer Sothfut on the stream. We'll say hi to Joel and Melanie. And Brandon was watching. I'm not sure if any of the other cast are watching, but I love seeing them on these streams. just done one folks I could have just done one I got so excited about doing two thought no problem two wagons I'm selling myself short we may actually still make it but not exactly doing the best kind of technique because <laughs> we are rushing a little bit when you guys do your own just make sure that you're letting your your washes dry completely um, that you're letting your base coats dry completely before you do stuff, because otherwise you could be in for a world of hurt. But you can see there, some of the paint was coming off that edge. I just used a dry brush and it cleaned it right up. And there we go. All right, so that is, oh, I didn't, I didn't do this thing here. Okay. It's pretty good though. I'm pretty happy with the level of detail on these so far. They're looking pretty all right. So next is Filthy Brown. That is a lighter color brown. We are going to now focus the dry brush kind of in, in a smaller area. This is a very light brown. It's almost a yellow. It's kind of, kind of a gold yellow color. Um, and we want to focus that in a smaller area, mostly on the very edges and in the, in the areas where the light would hit the most. So we're being very careful with this, um, which I wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> I need to wipe more off. Um, but basically just a, a small little Highlight, maybe in the center of these panels. I want to just touch that very lightly, top edges of things, and this will just give that top edges of these. That there. It's just going to give us a bit more of a highlight, the corners, and so on the center of these panels here. There we go. And that is filthy brown we're using for that. Okay, I think that's good. 
Next one, don't need a lot of this. Question, other than priming, what is the biggest difference you find painting metal versus resin minis? Um, uh, the biggest issue that I have with metal minis um, for me, and which is why I actually don't paint them anymore, is because I find that they don't last as long. And so uh, no matter how much you prime them or how much you add a varnish afterwards, I always find that metal minis start to at some point flake and um, and kind of lose the paint and, and so on. So. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's a better way to do it. But for me, I find metal minis are very temperamental that way and don't have the longevity. Um, I have a bunch of Lord of the Rings minis that I painted a long time ago, and they have now since, um, the, you know, basically chipped off to the point where kind of not they're unusable, but I'd have to repaint them. So that's that's my thing. Uh, plastic holds. I find the paint a lot easier a lot longer. Uh, there are some diehards that love their, their metal minis and they're wonderful and especially the old Ralph Partha stuff. There's a nostalgia factor there for sure. Uh, but for me, um, plastic is the way to go um, moving forward just because of its durability. If I drop them, it's not gonna, it's not going to necessarily chip off and so on. So anyway, so that is that one. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead at this point. And I guess we can do some dry brushing on the top. I need to find out if I actually have to do a wash on the top th there, or if I can just there, <laughs> or I can just um, dry brush it and it'll be fine. Uh, my assumption is if I dry brush it, it'll be fine. Let's find out. Using my larger dry brush, a little cross, and you're gonna see how, again, I'm going against the grain. So I'm picking up all of the little details Go with the grain a touch, but I'm going to go back to against the grain real quick. There we go. And I typically, when I'm dry brushing, I'll start against the grain so that the main details get the most and then go with the grain once there's less, once there's less paint on that brush. I love this piano thing harpsichord, whatever instrument it is. So, uh, you know what? I'm happy with that. I don't think I needed, needed a wash on there. That's cool. Works for me. Then we're gonna wash that green off. And you know what? I am going to fold this over so I have more surface area. Grab the Warlord purple. How does the Vallejo handle sunlight exposure good question i have a uh case out right in the in a get sun part of the day i've never had any issues yet um good question great question joel just asked melanie from our stream if she's ready to die or, or sorry melanie just asked joel from our stream if he's ready to die again <laughs> Oh dear. Spoiler warning for people who haven't watched this, 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 this stream. So this will be kind of an interesting contrasty color. Uh, it's pretty bright compared to the heavy purple we used. But I think it's nice. I like that. I want it to, it to be nice and cheery. as Vistanis tend to have these bright colors. And this is Esmeralda's wagon, uh, according to, uh, to WizKids, and it was kind of their intention to make this her wagon, but again, this is gonna be used for, these are gonna be used for all of my Vistani camps that you'll see on the stream. That worked. There we go. Nice. Okay, 35 minutes, here we go. Yes, all of those things. Aegis Winter says the music is ominous, haunting, melodious, yet threatening. So true. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do all the metal areas real quick. 
This is going to be super fast. I'm going to use gunmetal. I am going to use my number two brush. A little bit of water, again, diluted as usual. And we're just going to go through and start to pick out all of those areas. Now I'm going to do these lamp kind of posts, gunmetal. Now I am going to do lights kind of inside these tavern lights effects. What I might do, folks, is these kind of have to get done anyways for the stream. So if we have to go overtime, uh, we can't go overtime on the D and D stream because um, they are they are uh, airing D 4s game, and we can't we can't do that. But we can continue on the Realmsmith channel. So for those of you on the D and D channel who want to continue, uh, because we're going overtime, you guys can come over to the Realmsmith channel and have a watch there. Yeah, I love this music. It's so cool. Soundscape does a wonderful job. It's funny, I love the singing that you hear in the in the Sirenscape sound sets and so on are actually Ben Looms, the founder, creator of Sirenscape, doing a lot of that stuff himself. He's actually a very talented singer. I don't know if he did that part right there but but he's very talented wonderful guy you guys can check that out i'm not afraid to get the metal into the kind of the pain area of where the the light will show through but all right so that is those then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to paint these i'm kind of using the side of my brush to do this running the side of the brush along and this will really close in that roof texture really nicely. Like that. Here we go. And I'm just going to do all along the edge here. The bottom edge just slightly. I want to make sure I don't get any on the roof there accidentally. I'm just doing the bottom edge slightly here. There we go. The other side. There we go. Still gonna try and get done in time, but I really want to get give you guys and let you guys see how we do the um, some of the lighting effects on the on the lanterns and stuff. That I think is really super cool. So willing to go a little over time on this to be able to give you a look into that and how I would do that. Get this whole edge here, done. Okay, you can see how that's really starting to kind of close in the detail. As soon as you've kind of covered up all of the, um, all the primed areas when kind of a miniature starts to kind of come alive, I'm gonna paint these metal kind of brackets that are holding uh, these braces down. I'm assuming it's like a brace or like a handle. It's not a handle. I don't know what you would call this. But 
It's going through. A little bit of turbo speed. That's okay. Just hitting all of this with metal. Um, the center of the wagon wheel for me feels like it should be metal. So we're just going to do the whole kind of center. Like that. See, there's potential spoilers floating around the chat. <laughs> Do you find Zenithal priming a meaningful step in creating highlights and shadows? Uh, Just, I've actually, frankly, never done it. Um, I do use my airbrush. For those of you that are new kind of to painting, Zenithal highlighting is the process of uh, on a, uh, you prime a miniature black and then you use kind of white or gray to spray kind of a light source from above um, to allow kind of an undercoat of of shading before you paint and it it allows i mean i've seen people do it to great effect i think it's an incredible um process for me i don't uh, i'm not too concerned about about getting that level of kind of uh, detail or finish on my miniature just because i'm trying to get them done quickly get them on the table fast um and just isn't necessarily my style i do use my airbrush for um like object source lighting or special like magical effects. Thanks for the follow. Um, things like that. But uh, I haven't tr uh, experimented with zenith zenithal highlighting just yet. Although one day maybe I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, just adding all of these little metal areas just doing trim, so I did the, the chain here on the back of the wagon. Probably gonna paint that, that sign a little lighter than it is there. Um, but I'm just kind of picking out some, some areas that I want to be metal. I'm gonna paint the edge of this kind of floor area. I imagine that that would be also kind of metal in color, almost like it would have like a like a brace or like a, a lining of, of metal across here. I don't see a metal texture on it. I got a little bit on the side here. So I just think that that, in the reference I saw online that I really liked of a paint job that was done on this, I wish I remembered the artist's name. I'd love to give him credit, but I saw that he did this and I just thought it added a lot to kind of separate the wagon top from the bottom. Being careful not to hit the wagon itself, but that is difficult to do sometimes. Doing my best. And the front of this, of course. Trying not to get the top, but I will kind of complete this whole kind of under area because I imagine it would be reinforced like that. Um, let's see. Am I missing any metal? Um, I imagine that these kind of these axles here would be all metal but I'm not sure if we have the time or if it's worth necessarily making all of that metal. Um, oh, the padlock would be metal too. Maybe gold. I've got gold, so I'll make that gold after. Um, uh, you guys can tell me your thoughts on that. If I should make these axles metal or not. I imagine they would be kind of like layers of... I've seen them metal before. But... <laughs> Thank you. Snapdad says, The miniature may not be metal, but you, sir, are definitely metal. <laughs> and I thank you for that. I, I, uh, I don't know if my kids would agree, but but thank you. I'm going to paint this metal um, colored. That is the gunmetal color because it will be glued on eventually. So um, I'm just going to paint that on my on the side here. Now I'm holding it, so I'm going to have to touch it up anyways when I... But while I have the metal out, why not? 
I'll just have to touch it up after. There we go. Okay. Continuing on just to wagon number two. I'm going to do the whole smokestack, this kind of chainmail. Sorry, gunmetal color. It's kind of funny. Uh, DC just said, you never know when you need steaks in Ravenloft, and I am hungry, haven't had dinner yet. The first thing I thought was, hey, I could use a steak right now, and then I was like, oh, wait a second. Even the wrong spelling, that's how hungry I am. <laughs> Where do I buy these wagons? Good question. Um, your local hobby store would have them. They may have some online, Amazon, such but I would check out your local hobby store, give them a shout, ask them if they have any of the Adventurer's Camp set. They came in that, um, and they, it comes with horses and a campsite, bed rolls, all these things that you would need for your game anyways. A really cool, complete set. So I would, I would check with your local game store and find out if they have the Adventurer's Camp set, the unpainted Adventurer's Camp set from uh, WizKids. And they will let you know if they... Have it or not, and if not, you may be able to find it online. But support your game stores, folks. Support your game stores. Okay. Another lantern. I'm starting to zone in, folks. Less talking, more painting. Um. Missing all these. Let's talk of Oral. Oh, Oral. Oral was a NPC that met his demise. Episode one. Um. Oh, I'm giving away spoilers, and people are asking actually asking for the link to the playlist for our live stream. Oops. Um, yeah, so Puppy Lover says, is it possible to watch our live stream, uh, the Into the Mist live stream, and still be able to play Crystal Strahd spoiler-free in the future? That's a tough one. So the reason that's a tough one is because we do follow the source material fairly closely. We are making some deviations, but not a lot. So unfortunately, I would say yes. The nice thing about Crystal Strahd is that uh, the Taroka deck which is a fortune-telling kind of mechanic in the game um, and is supported by the campaign book, um, creates a different circumstance by which certain things happen in the game every time. Uh, so without spoilers, just to say that just because you watched our version doesn't mean it'll all play out in the same order as it would in a home game. So keep that in mind. So the answer is yes and no. Um, it really depends how your DM runs it. But if you tell them, hey, I watched it and I kind of know a lot of the things that happen, um, they may be able to kind of adjust the time frame, timeline, maybe start in a different spot than we did. We did the typical start from the east uh, in Barovia, the village of Barovia, and then move west. Whereas they could they could potentially do something else. So absolutely there are ways to play it differently and change it up so that it's not totally spoiled for you. Thank you, Walter. Walter's saying, looking good. Highly recommended curating the possible cards. Yes. Um the cards themselves, the actual Taroka deck that you're able to buy separate for Curse of Strahd that D&D um, released is unreal, unbelievable. So cool. I actually have it here somewhere, I think. And it's really very, very cool. I would highly suggest getting those just for immersion purposes alone. 
it gives you instructions of how to use a regular card deck if you wanted to, but the Taroka deck itself is really super cool. And my players haven't got there yet, so careful not to give them spoilers in the stream, as I know some of them are watching. Okay, so that's the that one. This one's drying nicely. I didn't see anything necessarily about painting the um, the axles and the under kind of hardware of the carriage, so I may leave it brown, kind of wood, at least for now. Give you guys a chance still to kind of sound off on that if you think I should. Go the metal route. Every time I say metal now, I think of music. All right. That sound right there that you heard is a door opening, I think. Or look, no, it's a it's a floor creaking. But every time it happened, Callie in our game thought it was somebody passing gas. That was pretty funny. All right, so that's that. Also going to get the edge here. Snap Dad says, it's a cool mini, a lot of killer bits. It's true. The detail in this miniature is just pretty amazing. And the price point on this stuff is pretty awesome. Don't ask me how much it costs. <laughs> but I just know that WizKids in general, very, very competitive pricing on their miniatures. It's pretty amazing what you get for like a $5 mini. And the Beholder, $5, it's nuts. 5 Canadian, I don't know what that is. Was it five Canadian? I'm not even sure. It was five bucks in some currency. All right. Doing all right here. I'm going to leave that hardware wood color. Also makes a good point. He says maybe metal would be easier to fix. So I'm just going to leave it. I've seen different varieties of it online when I was doing my research so I am losing some of the green paint on the bottom of this roof here so that one too I just gotta watch that I have to go back and touch that up you know what I think that color's still wet in my palette so I might just open it up again a little bit here go back in and just touch that up here and I'm just going back with the heavy green a bit more. A little dab. That's the beauty of dropper bottles. Add just the right amount of paint that I need. There we go. Okay. Uh, that is not quite done yet. I still have to do, and I forgot that I was actually going to do a metal kind of rim around the wagon wheel on the outside. So I've seen that be the case on a lot of medieval wagons where basically this part here is metal thank you for the follow that might have been a sub um, there I think that looks really super cool and I think it's fairly accurate to the way they would have done it I don't think the whole kind of wheel part would be metal but most likely they would have kind of a sheet of metal around the rim of it. And I'm just going, not heavy, but a decent amount on my brush, so I'm not brushing it too much so that it doesn't go onto the edges of the wheel. And then I'm just wiping that off as I
then after that, I think I might be done. Well, no, actually, I still have to do the, the little center axle parts of the wheels here. I'll do this one now while I'm here so I don't forget. Do that. And I would usually wash all of these metal areas with a black wash. Um, but I won't do that today. Because I think they look alright. As is. Thank you for the follow again. You guys are great. Getting tons of followers today. And subs. It's awesome. Okay. This is going on very well, and I'm just using, on this you can see, I'm just using the edge of the brush, so just catching the edge, hopefully, at least that's the intention. Like that. Man, beat three weeks in a row, folks, by that clock. That is it's not okay. But you you do see how much I was able to get done in a short amount of time, which is also very cool. There we go. Another follow. Wow, you guys. Okay, so now the only other thing I'm going to do, just so I feel better about myself, I'm not going to do the whole thing metal under here, but I am just going to, Paint this kind of center area just to make myself feel good. Kind of the center of the axle. I'm just gonna there. I'm just gonna do that. I do think that should be metal. You can see that that detail kind of in the middle, but I'll just for right now, I'm gonna be happy with what I'm able to get done in the time allotted. And frankly, folks, it's actually good sometimes to give yourself a bit of a time limit so that you know. You're not overthinking it. You're just kind of moving to a known sort of, to a known um, destination. You've got something in mind. I did forget to do the chain on the back. I just looked at the other one and realized, oh, wait a second. Um. Does anybody out there have one of these wagons and is excited to jump in and paint one? This can sound off in the comments. I am working potentially on um, painting the unpainted. So they have an unpainted, uh, you know, the Falling Starship that WizKids released. They have an unpainted version. And so we're probably going to take a couple episodes at some point maybe next month to paint one, which would be super fun. Okay, so that is all the metal bits on that one. I'm gonna go back and do the wheels on this one. I tried to get one today, but store didn't have them. Oh, that's too bad. Sorry to hear that, puppy lover. Well, hopefully they were able to order it for you. Not seeing any questions just yet. Again, folks, you got any questions, just write question first in capital so I can see it while the chat is going by here. Um, but even adding this little bit of metal around the rim really adds, it's all the little details like that, that really kind of make a miniature pop. I try not to get the front. You get the front. It doesn't look horrible if you get the front, but just attempting not to. And this. go okay oh and you can also usually just wipe off and if it doesn't wipe off you can come back with a base coat if you wanted to and just touch it up a little bit 
One other thing, uh, I didn't want to keep make the paint list too long for those of you at home that want to try this, but I was going to add some environment effects, some mud and things like that to, to kind of cake up these, these wheels, I think would also be very cool. Um, so that's an option too if you want to take it kind of to the next level. kinds of conversation okay trying to get closer in here my back is starting to I'm getting old folks that's what happens and all the dads out there agreed in unison I remember the days where I throw my back out doing something active hiking something not so much anymore. I sneeze and back goes out. <laughs> okay. Get out of bed the wrong way. Ah! Such is life. All right. Like, okay, so that is done. I'm gonna do the little center area to make my heart happy. Really quick, blocking in all this metal. Seven minutes until we can move on from the D&D channel, but again, we will be on the Realmsmith Twitch a little longer tonight. Thank you for the follow. All right, so um, that is done. We've got all the metal parts. You can see looking pretty cool. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead at this stage and I'm gonna grab, get out some glorious gold. It's one of my favorite metallic gold colors. Another follow, you guys are awesome. And I'm going to just add a little bit in a couple of little areas. So what I had in mind is I was going to do these little um, kind of wheel things, these details. I'm going to do those gold, and then we're going to wash those after. But I thought that would be a neat little, neat little touch. This one too. Almost like kind of gold plated areas. Actually, what I might do is I might make that whole, you know what, I'm going to make this whole kind of filigree area, almost like it was gold leafed or something. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it on the inside too. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get to, so. Looks like this whole part here was plated with some sort of golden metal. Well, up to here, the Stanis have some wealth, so why not? Also, gonna go on this side. And do that. I apologize for those that are watching on the D&D Twitch. Uh, you will lose the stream while we continue on. Also, the YouTube channel, I think, will have a different sort of thing. So I apologize for that, folks. Um, but for the full video, you can tune in. Or we can try and maybe upload the full video from, the, um, from our version. Okay, so I'm I just did that little kind of area in there. And now I'm just kind of picking out little spots. I think I want to do all of these little filigree areas here. Gold. And this is just, now we're just having fun. 
carefully picking these out without getting it onto the metal or the wood, I should say. Like that. Try not to get the wood. It's tough, but I'm trying. I think that added quite a bit to that. I think that was worth it. Very cool, actually. I like that. I am going to make the little padlock gold. As they're typically kind of gold in color, the main part. Why not? Adds a little bit of detail there. Do this little kind of filigree here. Just the center area in gold. Because that's kind of fun. And then I'll do these, and then we'll move on to the back, to the other one. Probably should have just done one wagon, folks. I would have had it done. I'm learning. Almost done here, this part. Speeding through, doing fairly okay, considering, I think. I'm jinx myself. There. Okay. And that is, I think, all for the gold. I was going to do like these little squigglies. I'm not going to bother that with that. But that, I think, is looking really nice. Okay. Uh, uh, is the chat set to sub only? Question over on D and D. No, no, our chat in uh, in on the Realm Smith. I think is anyone can chat. I don't think it's just sub only. Um, but I think Joel is on it. Two minutes left. For those of you that are on D&D, thanks for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it again. Tomorrow night, uh, conclusion of Death House uh, on Into the Mist at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. That is our Curse of Strahd official D&D campaign on the D&D Twitch and on the Realmsmith Twitch. Check that out. It's interactive. It's fun. Raising money for the kids uh, while we play some crazy D&D. So check that out as well. Next week, we will be doing horses. Those are the draft horses from the Adventurer's Camp, uh, camp set. Um, to go along with these awesome wagons that we're painting this week. And uh, Gary Khan, make sure you check out the event list and you sign up for live Nolzers painting the young red dragon live at the show. Uh, if you're going to be there, make sure you get your tickets. 20 bucks, you get a class, you get the mini, and you get to hang out with some uh, D&D celebrities and all that kind of stuff. So... Uh, love you guys as usual. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we are going to sign off from D, D at this moment and then we will still be live on the uh realm smith twitch uh but we will be switching to d4 so uh on the D, &D chat so if you guys are here for d4 enjoy them great group of folks and uh we will see you guys in just a second i'm going to go to um i'm just going to step out for one sec Stop this, the stream. I don't know if I have to stop the stream on my end, but I'm going to anyways on the D&D stream. I'll kill it on our end, too, so it's not complicated. I don't know how that works. And then I'll be right back, and we'll continue with these awesome things. Dun, dun, dun. And we're back. Hello, Realmers. Those of you on Facebook and on our Twitch. Nice to see you all. 
back on Facebook here saying hi to Kelly and Shannon and Steve. Hey, Realmers. Welcome. Cairo Frost says, I lived near Toronto for four years. Nice. What area near Toronto were you? We are in Oakville. Aha, BFC Borden. Ha. <laughs> right on. That is an army base. Okay. Correct. Um, gonna go on this one now. Basically, just adding all of the same gold highlights. Thanks for hanging out, folks, and continuing with us. I think I just got a sub. So after we do all of these kind of gold inlay areas, I don't, I was gonna add a wash to these. I, I probably will add a wash to the wheels. I'm not gonna add a wash to these little areas. They're just so small that it's just gonna, it's not really worth the time that it takes to dry and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're probably just gonna leave them as is because they're popping really nice right now. Um, I'm not too worried about that, but I am going to add a wash to these areas, I think. Maybe. Yes, I will. Because they look a little flat. Perfect. I actually forgot to base coat this in brown on this side, so... Good thing we're painting it gold now. Oh, this one too. Man. Oh, I missed that. Make sure you guys get the edge too. Last few sessions were sub only chat. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's not good. Thanks, DC. Appreciate it. Yeah, great stream as usual. Thanks for moderating. And we will see you tomorrow night. side of this one because I'm seeing some primer come through and this one there. Okay, so that is all the gold areas on those except for the little accents that I added on the other one. So the padlock, the little part filigree up here, as well as the little filigree on the top here on the front. Done. Perfect. That works. Okay. Now, folks, next. Um, I said I was going to do, I think I'm gonna do some washes here real quick on the metal, on some of the metal. I'm gonna do a wash on the, not on all of it, um, just in certain areas. We're gonna get some more black wash. Question, have you done the T-Rex yet? I have. Um, don't know if there's a video of it. I think we did it as part of one of our Origins master classes, and we were live on those. Um, sorry, I'm using black wash, folks, on the lanterns here, just to give them some shadow and depth. Um, I know we did it on one of our Origins live streams. I think live from Origins. I think they're on our Facebook. So if you go to our Facebook and on our videos, I'm pretty sure while you're there, you might as well follow us on Facebook. But um, if you go to facebook.com slash realmsmithtv, maybe Joel can link the the, the page there. Um, we can, yeah. Um, I think it's on there, the T-Rex, but I've been asked a couple times to do on this show, so I probably will at some point. Um, I actually don't have any currently. 
So I'd have to get some in stock. But yeah, that's something that uh, pe people have been asking for, so we'll probably end up doing. Adding a little bit of wash just to the wagon center wheel thing here. There, and we'll do it on the other side as well. But I think that's all that we'll do. I am going to check the, the chain. Just doing it on the front there. Um, the chain could use a little bit of wash too. So we're just going to do that. And that'll just bring out that chain detail a bit more. There we go. Washes will um, dull down the metal colors, folks. Just keep that in mind when you're adding a wash. So if it's something that you don't necessarily want to dull down, I'm actually going to dull down the side of this wheel a bit because the metal's coming through. Um, but they are also um, matte, so a matte color. So, for example, if you have a metal area, I'm just going to cover this with a little bit of brown here. That's just the most glaring area. Thanks for the sub. Um, but yeah. Uh, so if you're adding a wash to an area of um, like, a, like a shiny area, like a metal, you're going to want to do a, a dry brush or something over on top of that afterwards because it um, it will dull down that area quite quite significantly or that surface quite significantly. Just continuing my black wash on the other one real quick. Lanterns, I'm just adding a little bit here and there. Wheels. Chains. This is the first time we've ever actually gone over time. We went under time on a bunch of them. It's the first time we're actually going longer than we should. I like that. It's all right. Okay. There. So that is that. I am going to use a little bit of this heavy brown or heavy sienna to come back in and just cover some of this metal that I got on the front of the wheel because we don't want that. Just a little bit there. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a sepia wash. And that is another game color wash that we have. Question, any luck finding a fire giant? Uh, <laughs> oh, so I have not yet. Um, I, that will be in the next WizKids shipment, uh, hopefully. So I will keep you posted on when that will be happening. Um, hopefully soon. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of sepia wash to these gold areas sepia is a great color for gold for me it's my favorite to use as a wash on gold areas so I'm just gonna it just keeps it nice and warm and and uh goldy <laughs> as you can see that's just really kind of keeping that that golden color uh, a little bit there a little bit on the walk good Switch over to this bad boy. A little bit more of a wash on those gold areas. I'm not putting it too thick. Don't want to obscure any of the detail or anything like that, but don't want it to pull too much. Just adding enough to. There we go. Perfect. That is all the metal areas done. That is exciting. Now, I think what we're going to do... Oh, I didn't add a wash to... I still have some black wash here. So I'm going to add just a little bit of wash to this smokestack. And then when I glue that other smokestack back on, we'll do that one as well. Um, there. And that just will make it a bit more... Grimy, smokestacky. Okay, so this is the wagon so far. Um, I do have it metal on top here. I've seen that the other kind of uh, reference material had this kind of be a cushion on top. I'm going to leave it metal. But now I'm going to do all of the windows. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to go with orange fire. We're going to use that as an initial kind of base coat for that. 
and we are going to go ahead and paint this into all of the little window areas. Now, I've seen some people paint this so that none of these are windows, just the center one. The boxed area only has the center one as a window, but the one that I saw the other day actually had all of these be kind of windows along the side. I liked that uh, look because it just gave it a little bit more character. So I'm actually going to paint. Well, all of these would be windows up here. So we're just going to do all that. Now, orange fire doesn't have to be super solid. You can see it's kind of going on, but it's not covering super well um, or, you know, too opaque, but that's okay. This is just kind of an initial base coat. Um, I'm also not too concerned. I don't want it on the actual wood on the front, but I do want it to kind of almost go up like it's glowing off of the side. So I'm not too concerned about it going edge to edge here too much. Center window here. I'm trying not to get, I could probably use a zero brush on this, but I'm too lazy at this point to switch, which is what just happened. <laughs> just had it go off onto the, onto the side, but that's okay. Um, so that's what that looks like. I think, yeah, I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of these little window areas. Now that is probably going to take some time, folks, so maybe I'll just do it on one wagon. And then show you how to kind of finish that, that effect on one. And what I'm doing here is I'm pushing the, the brush down and just allowing it to kind of curve along the sides and into the recesses here. Kind of expand on the other end here, pushing it through, making sure it catches all of the corners. Like that. Hmm. If you have an Amazon Prime account, oh, that's that's not a question. That is our moderator. Question, if possible, could we get a little peek at the Red Dragon? Yeah, totally. Sup, Lego? There we are. Young Red Dragon. Super cool. Um, another question is, are the master classes gonna be at Origins this year? That is absolutely in our plans. Um, plans sometimes change, but as it stands right now, Origins is the show we do every year. So the chances are very good that we will be again at Origins this year doing Vallejo and WizKids Master Classes. That is currently in the plan. And a show we love to do and love to be at every year. Okay. We actually had a booth at Origins last year and a booth at, at PAX. It's really exciting. Okay, so that is the last of the orange fire that I need. Like that. Um, now, it's not super solid, but that's okay because we're going to use a wash in there and it's going to make things really cool. Maybe bring the intensity up a little bit on some of these. I may do a second coat up here. Didn't really get too didn't really go on too heavy here so we're just gonna yeah, solidify that a bit so that's what that looks like on that side uh, and then of course uh, the back has got some as well like that There 
go. And and then there's obviously windows right in the center here. So we're going to try and not hit. Again, I'm using a brush that's probably way too big for this purpose. But if it goes off to the edge, it almost kind of looks like there's light coming through. So we're not too concerned about that. And, and like bouncing off stuff, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. Okay. So that is one side. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the pale yellow now to bring that all together. Pale yellow is another game color color. Game color color. Forty viewers, guys! You all came and joined us from D and D. Thank you so much. Holy cow! We were like twenty when we went off air. Okay, so we're gonna dilute this pale yellow a fair amount here. Uh, will we record the master classes? Yes, we typically do uh, record master classes. And yes, unplugged again is in the plan for next year, unless anything changes. Um, for sure. Okay, so now what we're doing here is we're just adding this pale yellow, kind of into the center. Um, to make it look like, and we want to dilute it and work it in, but basically we want it to look like there's light coming through these, leaving some of that orange fire in the corner and making it more intense as it gets into the center like that. Um, that's the hope, and if it's diluted enough, it tends to blend a bit better so you're not getting the hard, hard line but you can see oh, it looks all right. That is the desired approach. I'm going to do the same on all of these little guys. Again, keeping the orange fire around the edges. On these, you're basically almost doing like a line and two dots down the center. And it kind of looks like Esmeralda is just kind of in her wagon. Reading a happy little book about how to kill Strahd. <laughs> Not sure there's a happy little anything in Barovia just yet. I can ask my players. I'm pretty sure they're pretty convinced too. Barovia does have redeeming factors. They have trees. Trees are nice. Our adventurers are mostly nice. We won't say which ones aren't. But I think you guys can decide for yourselves. Hopefully David's not watching. <laughs> but he'd be the first to admit it. Okay. There we go. So that's how that should look. Now it looks like there is light coming through those happy little windows channeling Bob Ross here and we would do the same here folks for the lantern as well so we'll paint in basically these areas here all orange fire and then do the same paint the pale yellow into the center And again, we're not too concerned about getting some of this orange fire onto the areas that, or the partitions, I should say, of each of the panes, because frankly, it would get some light reflected on those areas anyways. So not to worry too much about getting it on there. There. And there. Like that. And then we would, again, add the yellow in the middle. Then, just to finish off those panes, what we're going to do is we're going to get some sepia wash and we're going to come in and just, thank you for the follow, put it into the corners there. Now, I would use maybe a, an orange or a red wash for this. Um, sepia is not the best wash for this, but it will do the trick. It's just what we happen to have in our palette. So, I'm just painting it around the corners there and it's going to 
just add some depth there and help to bring out the center on those a bit. Now if you really wanted to go a step further, um, you could add kind of a bit of a dry brush along those and it would make it look like it's really glowing. But I think that that does a pretty decent job of, of the effect that we're looking for. Orange fire is now dry on this, these lanterns, so we're just going to go again in the middle, paint some pale yellow, and this is a very easy kind of beginner to intermediate way to make a lantern or, or you know, firelight work. Yeah. Now I would have to do that across the back and all of the all of the windows there, which is going to take some time. today. Let me think if there's anything else that I need to paint here for you folks before I let you all go. I just want to make sure I cover all of the techniques on these wagons, but I think that probably will do. I think that's a wrap on Esmeralda's wagon, and I think this is the pre-painted one. This is our painted version today. Um, it looks good next to each other all kind of fits the theme. Uh, again, folks, you know, just over two hours, we painted almost two full wagons. I'm gonna go through and finish all of these uh, windows. Might as well, because I'm gonna need these in the next few weeks, probably. Um, that's not a spoiler, that's just a foresight. Um, but, uh, oh, I really badly wanna try the dry brush on, on some of this to see if I can make these glow a bit more. Shall I? Okay, I shall. Let me just get a little bit of orange here. Now I'm afraid that I'm gonna actually mess up the area instead. Oh, no, it looks, okay, that looks okay. That looks cool. Now, I should have done this maybe before I put the yellow in because now, oh, that looks really neat. Because now I'm getting the center of it and I'm diluting it, but you can see that makes it look like it's glowing. That is super cool. Now I'm just gonna, basically what I'm doing is I'm just dry brushing that orange just around the actual window on either side of the window frame. So like I said, I'm probably gonna do that on the other windows before I put the, the, the pale yellow in there because it's actually bringing that pale yellow down a bit. But you can see kind of how that makes it look like we're getting um, reflected candlelight onto the window, the area around the window. Yeah, that's very cool. Definitely gonna do that. All right, well, that is a wrap on Esmeralda's, wa Esmeralda's Wagon. Uh, I had Esmeralda here. She's right here. This is Esmeralda, who she probably have the purple wagon, maybe. I don't know. She's a badass. Maybe she she rocks the green one. But um, we painted her in a, in a separate uh, one that you can see. I don't know what episode it was, but it's on our YouTube. You guys have a wonderful week. We will see you guys tomorrow night for um, for <laughs> Into the Mist episode six. Six? Is it six already? Or is it seven? Oh, geez, I think it's six. I'm not even sure. I've just lost track. I think it's six. Episode six. It's going to be great. Um, I have the whole setup of what's going to happen here tomorrow. You guys are seeing a bit of a um, 
a sneak peek of this area tomorrow for tomorrow's session, um, which will be super exciting. These guys are uh, in it. They're in the thick of it. So make sure that you catch the recap, um, get caught up, and then join us tomorrow night. Gary Khan, check out the event list at GaryKahn.com at Tabletop Events, and you will be able to sign up and pay for your ticket to paint with us live at Gary Khan with celebrity guests, uh, which we don't know yet, and we'll be painting the Young Red Dragon. Make sure that you follow us on YouTube.com slash RealmSmith, Facebook.com slash TV, as well as at TV on Twitter and on Instagram, and then you can follow us here too. Uh, and every sub helps us to continue to do this. So we thank you for your subs. If you happen to have a Twitch Prime sub and you want to uh, gift it to us, that would be incredible. We'd love to have you guys. You guys have a wonderful week, uh, well, night, and we will see you tomorrow night for the conclusion of Death House uh, for Into the Mist. Have a good one, guys. Take care.